This is a very important story of the day. In a big step towards pay parity between men and women in sports, the New Zealand Cricket Board has announced equal pay for men and women cricketers. From 1st of August onwards, men and women cricketers will get the same pay so that even travel, accommodation and training will be the same for both men and women teams. After the settlement of the new deal, the top-ranked New Zealand women's player uh, will receive uh, 163246 New Zealand dollars per year at par with their male counterparts. Now, previously it was only $83,000. $432. Meanwhile, in domestic cricket, top-ranked women's domestic players in each major association would be able to receive a maximum of $19,146. All right, uh, so this is uh, the story that we are tracking on Mirror now. And to have uh, this conversation, I'm joined by Devika Malik, a special guest on the broadcast, international para-athlete and national youth uh, awardee. Devika Malik, thank you so much for making time and speaking to Mirror Now. Uh, this is one story that brings a smile to everyone's face. And this is a very important development for it shatters glass ceilings. It talks about representation and equality. As a sports person yourself, how do you see this? What is your first reaction? I think it's absolutely a, a welcome progression because when we talk about inclusion, when we talk about equal uh, pay for equal work or equal play, equal pay. Um, none of it needs to be tokenistic. The fact is that we are putting in the equal amount of effort. Even if you look at uh, now women's cricket in India, they are uh, bringing home laurels at par with the men's team. Uh, we have amazing stars in uh, uh, Smriti Mandhana, Mithali Raj. They have set such amazing standards and, you know, they have... Uh, also inspired more women to come into the sport of cricket or why does cricket look across sports in India? Uh, look at the trends in the uh, past two Olympics and Paralympics. So many of the women have brought home medals. Uh, so definitely uh, that is a direct result of putting our faith and faith not just uh, ideologically but also in terms of resources, in terms of uh, money in terms of training, in terms of equal rewards. Uh, when those resources are put in, uh, the results are self-evident. Absolutely. And uh, Devika, as you mentioned, Spriti Mandana, Mithali Raj and other uh, players, uh, Spriti Mandana herself has uh, raised this issue of pay parity several times and uh, you yourself are making these important points. For the benefit of our viewers, let's talk about what happens here, what happens in India. If you could share some examples from your own world of sports, if you could touch upon the disparity that exists uh, as far as the genders are concerned, do you think that this is a benchmark what New Zealand has done and India should definitely take a cue take, going ahead? Uh, absolutely. I think any progress in the right direction, whichever part of the world it happens in, it should be something that we look up to and uh, try to learn from and abide by. Uh, if you talk about my personal experiences, I come from the state of Haryana, which, as you know, um, has done some tremendous uh, work for sports and women in sports as well. So uh, my entire playing career, I have known it to be uh, parity in terms of uh, whatever cash rewards we get, whatever training opportunities we get. Um, so I have never really had to uh, think of myself as a female athlete rather than just an athlete or a para-athlete. Because uh, uh, since way back in 2010, when I started competing nationally, uh, every time I won a gold medal or a silver medal at the national level, there are certain policies that the Haryana sports policy has where you get uh, cash rewards for the medals that you win at the national level. And never once have I had to think twice about whether I am getting the same kind of rewards as my male counterparts because that has been the case since day one. And same goes for the policies, uh, the sports policies at the central government level as well. Uh, so definitely in our sports, we don't get paid to play as such, mm -hmm. but uh, 
whatever training facilities we get and the other athletes who are at a much higher level than me, they are inducted in schemes like the Target Olympic Podium Scheme when they uh, become medal probables for the Olympics and the Paralympics. So none of those schemes have ever uh, displayed a sense of disparity between female and male athletes, and that's something that I'm really proud of. In addition to that, we have recently seen that women's safety uh, within sports, especially when traveling internationally to compete uh, with the Indian team, that has also been brought in the spotlight. And, uh, you know, the sports authority has uh, made certain uh, changes and made certain progress in those areas as well to ensure women's safety within those team structures. So this is all steps in the positive direction. Right. You mentioned a very important point uh, there, Devika Malik. You talked about uh, women's safety. Uh, and uh, we're also talking about uh, representation there. Uh, apart from equal pay for equal play, uh, do you think that representation of women, as far as in the leadership roles, as far as sports in India is concerned, that is also a very important uh, factor that the, that the Indian sports fraternity should take a cue on uh, because uh, what we understand is that most of the top positions in the top sporting bodies are occupied by men. Absolutely, absolutely. So when we were talking on the issue of women's safety, you've seen now yeah. that sports authority is talking about having more female coaches in the pipeline, having more female technical staff in the pipeline. So sports is not only about the playing the active athletes, but also about the infrastructure that's around sports. And we need more women within that system and that pipeline as well. And that is something that has been taken cognizance of. And specifically, if you talk about women in leadership positions, um, I'm happy to share that the president of the Paralympic Committee of India uh, happens to be a Khel Ratna para-athlete who has also won the first ever Paralympic female medal for this country. She is a woman, she is a disabled person, and she is uh, the first Paralympic female medalist of the country, and she also happens to be my mother. So I know that... Wow, uh, that's lovely. <laughs> so I'm talking about uh, Dr. Deepa Malik. Deepa Malik, and I, yes. So, so from that example, I, I can confidently say that efforts are being made in the right direction uh, to ensure that there is not just tokenism, but authentic parity for women in the sporting ecosystem. And uh, above all else, I think what we need to do is have a cultural shift in mindset for people across genders to accept that, yes, women deserve to be in position these positions and we need to uh, you know respect the fact that we have women amongst us in these positions and get comfortable with that get comfortable with seeing a woman in leadership get comfortable with seeing a woman in sport and getting equally rewarded equally paid for her work that should not make people uncomfortable Absolutely. And when it comes to women representation, nothing should make anyone un uncomfortable. Thank you so much, uh, Devika Malik. Uh, you and your mother are an inspiration for a lot of people in this country. Thank you for having this conversation with me on Mirror Now. It is an important step towards equality, what New Zealand has done. And we have to wait and watch if uh, other countries and most importantly, India can take a cue on this. Thank you for joining us.